Hello, welcome to Awake in the Age of Revealing. This is Doug Michael. It is August 1st, 2015 at the time of this recording. Um, the title for today's segment is Fukushima, the extinction level event that no one is talking about. It's good to be back doing this, ladies and gentlemen. First, I would like to extend my thanks to all of my new subscribers. I seem to be picking up a handful every single day. Um, it's growing at a rate faster than I ever imagined. I am contacted every day by people all over the English-speaking world, and I want to express my thanks. Um, I have to tell you, I'd say a good 98% of the comments and feedback that I receive is very positive, very encouraging, and I really do appreciate it. And ladies and gentlemen, I do try to answer all of those comments. I can't always get to everyone, so if I don't answer yours, please don't take it personally. I've been very busy, and it's hard to get to all of them, but I do try to do that. I want to thank um, many of you that have contacted me personally and all of you that have shared this information. I'm actually a little bit overwhelmed that it has reached such a growing audience. I believe now my videos are approaching about 200,000 collective views and have penetrated into about 186 countries. So I'm thrilled to see that information like this, this alternative kind of controversial information, is reaching such a wide audience. And again, thank you one and all. Now. I'd like to get into a little bit discussing the uh, Fukushima nuclear disaster. Um, there's still many, many people that are unaware that this cataclysmic event is occurring. Um, and the title, Fukushima, the extinction level event that no one is talking about, I ba I'm basing this on a blog that I wrote back in March of this year. And uh, you could find it uh, at dougmichaeltruth.wordpress.com. And at the time, I had only had maybe 1,600 hits to my blog site. There's a bunch of different kind of interesting things there, some of which I have made videos out of, like I'm doing here today. And um, once I posted that particular article about Fukushima, it brought in well over 100,000 different hits from all over the place. It caused quite a stir. I've seen this article reposted all over alternative media, including Rents and many other alternative sites. And... My goodness, I've been contacted by all kinds of people, including one uh, pro-nuke PhD from Stanford who, instead of debating me point by point, which I never have a problem with, instead resorted to ad hominem attacks, so I just deleted them. That's another thing. Folks, if, if you're going to contact me, please do. Even if you disagree with me, that doesn't bother me. I will post your comments and I will respond. If you're going to act like a fucking troll and use ad hominem attacks... Don't bother, because don't waste your time. I won't even bother with it. If you disagree with me, that's fine. And if you want to do a point-by-point, point, hey, I don't agree with this, I don't agree with that, that's fine. I will definitely respond to you. But again, if you act like a troll, just forget it. You're wasting your time. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, in, on March 11, 2011, we're told by official statistics, official sources, that... An earthquake of 9.0 magnitude struck off the coast of Japan and triggered a devastating tsunami, you know, which left parts of the country in complete shambles. Official reports claim that 15,891 people lost their lives, uh, 6,152 were injured, and at least 2,584 were reported missing. So this was a very, very devastating event. Now, I have since... I have I authored this particular piece. I have become aware of various other researchers who are claiming foul play. And uh, one I just recently came across, um, a freelance journalist by the name of Jim Stone. And I've been reading through this, and it is very interesting. Um, also, just as a matter of fact, as I was preparing to set up the equipment and do this this morning, I came across an article published by the uh, British newspaper The Telegraph back in um, 2013, and the headline reads, Tsunami Bomb Tested Off New Zealand Coast. And it reads in part, The United States and New Zealand conducted secret tests of a tsunami bomb designed to destroy coastal cities by using underwater blasts to trigger massive tidal waves. And 
The article continues. The tests were carried out in waters around New Caledonia and Auckland during the Second World War and showed that the weapon was feasible and a series of ten large offshore blasts could potentially create a 33-foot tsunami capable of inundating a small city. The top secret operation code named Project SEAL tested the doomsday device as a possible rival to the nuclear bomb. About 3,700 bombs were exploded during the tests, first in New Caledonia and later at Wangapara Peninsula near Auckland. Now you could find this if you searched the net, just put in tsunami bomb tested off New Zealand coast. And I thought that was very interesting. Could that be what triggered the tsunami in Japan? Now Jim Stone, the freelance journalist I just mentioned, seems to think that it was punishment for Japan agreeing to enrich um, plutonium for for Iran. And this article, which you can find at jimstonefreelance.com, uh, in part reads, I believe the phony 9.0 story was used as seismic cover for a tsunami nuke, which produced the tsunami of a 9.0 when detonated in the Japan Trench where no earthquakes of significance happen, as punishment for Japan offering to enrich uranium for Iran. The rest of the story, the concealment, is black ops. Bet on it. In the tsunami videos, the tsunami rips through pristine and undamaged cities, where business as usual is obvious, and the tsunami is an ambush, not 9.0 earthquake ravaged debris. The quake is a paper-thin story taped together by the undeserved trust of a gullible public. And the stories? The CIA did not hire a million people last year for nothing. If there is evidence of a 9.0, show me. That is how big a 9.0 is. The entire nation should be in ruins, especially judging from the damage the 6.9 Kobe quake did. And nowhere, nowhere outside the tsunami zone is the entire country, in the entire country, is there a single damaged multi-story building, a single collapsed bridge, a single structurally damaged wood-framed house or skyscraper. If a picture exists that can be definitively pinned to this quake, show me. The only collapsed structure in all of Japan was an old welfare shelter near station MYG004, the true epicenter. And ladies and gentlemen, this particular article by Jim Stone, it is really interesting. I'm just now discovering this kind of uh, information about this disaster. And um, the title reads, 311 was Japan's 911. It's all documented, folks. And then the subtitle, This Investigation Has Been Endorsed by the Engineers Who Designed and Built Fukushima Daiichi. It's a very interesting read. It's going to take me quite a while to pour through this. So in the future, I may update uh, this Fukushima piece and try to really get to the bottom of this. It's really interesting, to say the least. And then um, another uh, alternative news site picked up on my article about April 5th this year, and there's an author note here that I found very interesting, too. It says, This writer is only mentioning part of the truth surrounding Fukushima. It wasn't a tsunami that caused the meltdown of the reactors, but the Stuxnet computer virus that Israeli IT personnel deliberately inserted into their safety protocol software, most likely because the Japanese decided to recognize the Palestinian state, which Israel couldn't allow. This was punishment to the Japanese people for an obvious betrayal to Israel. But I do agree with the writer that the whole world needs to recognize this horrific catastrophe for what it is, a looming extinction-level event that will affect the entire planet eventually. Now that's my point of this discussion today, ladies and gentlemen, is that while the public is distracted by, you know, a dentist who killed a lion in Africa, or by Bruce Jenner wanting to become a woman and having a sex change operation, or by uh, the rebel flag, or by gay marriage being legalized. These are all distractions to blind the public to unbelievable events that are occurring. 
For instance, the passage of the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, which dismantles more freedom, or of the Fukushima disaster, or any of a number of events that are occurring. So be very mindful when something is being pushed in the mainstream media and realize that a lot of it is meant to just to distract you while unbelievable events are occurring. So a lot of people still aren't aware that that this event is occurring. Now, whatever it is that caused the tsunami and whatever it is that caused the meltdown, the truth of the matter remains is that there is an ongoing nuclear disaster that has been unfolding off the coast of Japan for the last four years and very few remain even remotely aware of it. And again, when I authored that article, I got contacted by a number of people who were telling me I'm paranoid and it's just nothing to worry about. And the radiation occurs all through nature. And these knuckleheads don't realize that there's a difference between naturally occurring radiation and man-made radiation. The Stanford guy was the most comical to me because here's a PhD, very, you know, intellectual man, I won't say he's intelligent, but he's very intellectual, and he couldn't even sit in here and say, hey, look, Doug, this is why you're wrong here, this is why you're wrong here. No, nope. he resorted to ad hominem attacks and just trying to attack my character, so he's gone. I wouldn't even respond to something like that, nor would I ever. Don't waste my time. Now, according to official reports now, this was the most powerful earthquake ever recorded to have struck Japan, but as Jim Stone pointed out, not much of the country was left in shambles, whereas a 9.0 quake would devastate a thousand mile wide uh, area, usually. Um, it is said by official sources that um, this was the fourth most powerful quake ever in the world since modern record keeping began in 1900. Uh, the quake was so intense in magnitude that it shifted Honshu, the main island of Japan, by an estimated 8 feet and actually shifted the Earth's axis by between 4 and 10 inches. Again, this is official reports, so, you know, take it for what it's worth. Japan is a nation containing many nuclear reactors which produce roughly 30% of the nation's electricity. The majority of operable nuclear reactors are right along the coast in one of the most seismically active areas on the entire planet. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at a map of Japan and where the reactors are located, you could see that the vast majority of them are right along the coast. And there's a number of them. So, I mean, think of the mentality behind this. Let's... let's um, Surround the country with nuclear reactors right along the coast in probably the most seismically active place in the whole world. Now, the tsunami caused complete devastation of three of the six nuclear reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi facility, the cores of which melted within the first three days. In November 2011, the Japanese Science Ministry reported that radioactive cesium had contaminated 11,580 square miles of the land surface of Japan, with an additional 4,500 square miles contaminated. Now, the destroyed reactor sites have been dumping hundreds of tons of radioactive waste into the Pacific every single day for the past four years, and the devastating results are now becoming plainly obvious. Radioactive cesium, which is an alkali metal, rapidly contaminates an ecosystem and poisons the entire food chain. And this waste offshoot has been detected in Japanese foodstuffs over a 200-mile radius of the Daiichi facility. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, official statistics and official reports already claim that this disaster is far worse than the Chernobyl disaster that occurred uh, near the Ukraine. Now, cesium and other radioactive waste products are bioaccumulative. And again, um, with regards to um, the Stanford PhD and some of these other people that have contacted me saying I'm just paranoid, they're not making this, the distinction between naturally occurring radiation and cesium and radioactive waste products, which are man-made. So they're bioaccumulative, meaning that they accumulate in an organism at a rate faster then the organism can eliminate it. And of course, the Japanese government and TEPCO, TEPCO, which is the Tokyo Electric Power Company, are full of shit. They've blatantly lied about the amount of radioactive waste that has been leaking into the Pacific. However, the devastating results have been impossible to ignore. Okay, so now official numbers, according to TEPCO, 
has been 400 tons of radioactive waste leaking into the Pacific Ocean every single day since the uh, tsunami, which was March 11, 2011. So every, every day for the last four years, 400 tons a day leaking into the ocean. And that's what TEPCO's saying. Well, what, well, we know TEPCO's full of crap. So what is the number truly? I am willing to bet that the number is far greater, the amount of radiation that's leaking into the ocean. Now, I have wondered, since the beginning of this disaster, which is already shown, as I mentioned, to be far worse than Chernobyl, uh, in 1986, why the world's top leading scientists have not come together to figure out how to stop the leaking radiation, and the reason is because no one knows how to deal with it. Now, in March of 2015, it was reported in the Times of London that Akira Ono, who's the chief of the Fukushima Power Station, admitted that the technology needed to decommission the three melted down reactors does not exist and he has no idea how it will be developed okay ladies and gentlemen so you have the chief of the power station coming on camera and saying that the technology that we need to decommission these melted down reactors doesn't even exist and i have no idea how it would possibly be developed now that's scary and more recently um uh, pronounce this name, Nayahiro Masuda, he's the decommissioning chief of the Fukushima Daiichi Decommissioning Company, also stated that the technology just does not exist to remove the highly radioactive debris from the damaged reactors. So in other words, the reason that we have not had a meeting of the minds of the world's greatest scientists coming together to figure this out is because they know the technology doesn't even exist to deal with this. So the radiate, radioactive materials and the waste has been just pouring and pouring and pouring into the ocean. Ono also claimed that decommissioning, decommissioning the plant by 2051 may be impossible without huge leaps in technological advancement. Now think of that. He's talking about the year 2051 and he's saying it's probably going to be impossible unless we have great technological leaps. And it's also been estimated that plutonium fallout has been 70,000 times greater than atomic bomb fallout in Japan. So the fallout from this disaster, they're saying, is much, much greater than the fallout from the um, nuclear weapons that were dropped on Nagasaki and, Fuku and uh, Hiroshima. Japan has also seen a skyrocketing of childhood cancer rates, particularly thyroid cancer. And as of August... 2013, TEPCO did admit that between 20 trillion to 40 trillion becquerels of radioactive tritium may have leaked into the sea since the disaster. And since it's been shown over and again that TEPCO repeatedly lied and covered up the true extent of the disaster, like I said, that number is most likely far, far greater. While official sources keep claiming that there is no danger from the leaking radiation, sea life all along the west coast of the U.S. has been dying in alarming numbers, and many fish and sea creatures tested off the west coast have shown extremely high amounts of radioactivity that far exceeds safe limits. In actuality, though, there really are no safe limits of man-made radiation. I remember reading a report a couple years back how... Um, Oceanographers tested a bunch of bluefin tuna that were caught off the coast of the Pacific, and every single one of them tested extremely high for radiation. And yet I'm paranoid, you know. It's amazing when you go public with information and you're just, all you're doing is sharing information, even like what I am basing this on today, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about official sources. At once, you're descended upon as you're paranoid, you're nuts. People are very, very afraid to face a painful truth. But my argument has always been, if we ignore it, we do that at our own peril. Now, the Japan Times mainstream newspaper reported on February 25th, 2015, that cesium and other radioactive waste was pouring from the reactor one site directly into the ocean. And TEPCO did nothing to prevent the leak and simply ignored the problem for close to a year. There has been a massive die-off of marine life along the west coast of the United States, which has scientists baffled. Now, do you mean to tell me that scientists studying this death of the Pacific have not taken into account the possibility 
that it could be caused by the hundreds of tons of nuclear waste that has been pouring into the Pacific each day for the last four years. And so few dare to admit the extent of damage caused by this disaster or the fact that it's forcing us to face the possibility of our own extinction. What happens when the planet's largest body of water is rendered lifeless on a planet made up mostly of water? And what happens when the radiation accumulates in the atmosphere and is spread throughout the world by the jet stream? I mean, there are numerous sources that exist where you could see for yourself the massive die-off of sea lions and other sea life along the West Coast. It's been occurring, it's been reported in mainstream media and elsewhere. So, you know, anyone who cares to take the time can see this for themselves. But I'm just paranoid. So you don't have to worry about any of this, you know. In 2013, the Huffington Post picked up on this. They reported that massive amounts of krill washed up along the West Coast in a 250-mile stretch from Oregon to California. Now, krill is an essential part of the ocean's food chain. When marine life on the low end of the food chain dies off, the larger animals that feed on that marine life starve. Carcasses of dead sea lions and seals that were examined revealed high doses of radiation, and yet mainstream scientists remain baffled. There's been people that have um, tested washed up sea life, sea lions and seals with radiation detectors and have detected very high levels in these dead sea creatures. Now, another thing that's occurring, widely reported that massive amounts of starfish have appeared along the west coast that have literally turned to mush, kind of like wasting disease. USA Today reported on this and of course they claim that no one knows why, it's a mystery. Might it have something to do with the fact that the Pacific has now become, you know, a toxic waste dump? Well, that's just crazy paranoid talk. But, you know, there are arguments that this starfish die-off started before the Fukushima disaster, so it is a bit of speculation. But it could certainly be a contributing factor. It's also been reported that 98%, 98% of the seafloor of the Pacific is covered with dead sea life. Not surprisingly, mainstream scientists blame this massive death of the Pacific on global warming. Yeah, we're still tooting that horn. Here's a quote from a marine biologist. In the 24 years of this study, the past two years have been the biggest amounts of this detritus by far, said marine biologist Christine Hufard, who works at the research station off of California. Multiple other stations throughout the Pacific have been similarly seen similarly alarming increases. So she's saying that these monitoring stations have seen a massive increase of dying sea life in the Pacific. Now, the feeble efforts of TEPCO and the Japanese government to stop the radioactive leaks with ice walls, dams, and other paltry makeshift remedies have been in vain. Nobody knows how to contain the radioactive leaks, so the Japanese government and TEPCO do the next best thing. They lie about it and downplay the dangers. Business as usual, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> the head of the National Cancer Research Center in Japan reported in February 2015 that cancer rates have skyrocketed by 6,000% and that it was being swept under the rug. It must be global warming causing this unpre unprecedented rise in cancer rates, huh? And in January 2015, Japan's nuclear regulator approved TEPCO's ingenious plan to simply drain wastewater into the ocean. In November 2014, Ken Busler of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute claimed, My biggest concern is what's going on in Japan today and how that might make its way across to our coast. We know it's still leaking because we're measuring higher levels off Japan to this day. Even just the basic question, how much radioactivity was released at Fukushima? I can't answer that today. We may never be able to because of the lack of sampling, particularly in the ocean. An experienced veteran sailor by the name of Ivan McFadden, who has sailed the Pacific taking part in races, stated in an interview that It's dead for thousands of miles. There was nothing between the U.S. and Japan. Like sailing in a dead sea. Everything's all gone. Just talking about it, it makes me feel like I want to cry. No birds, no fish, no sharks, no dolphins, no turtles, nothing. And this is an experienced sailor, ladies and gentlemen, who has sailed the Pacific many times. And he's saying, you know, I remember uh, reading that interview 
he was saying, you know, once upon a time, he used to see all kinds of sea life and birds and sea mammals and other creatures. And now taking that same journey across the Pacific, there's nothing. He's saying it's like a dead zone. Now, this is the legacy that humanity is leaving for their posterity, a dead world. Humanity has allowed itself to be ruled by a ruthless, psychopathic gang of parasites whose greed and insatiable lust for power knows no bounds. There really is no one to blame, ladies and gentlemen, but ourselves. Now, the information that I'm sharing today it is not even a scratch on the surface of the true magnitude of this nuclear disaster. The radiation will bioaccumulate in the ocean and atmosphere for centuries to come. Mankind is staring our very extinction in the face. Now, this is an opportunity for humanity to face the force of our own destructiveness and to come together as one family. Unfortunately, the average person's thoughts seem to be firmly fixated on the sports scores or who's blowing who in the latest celebrity scandal or, I don't know, the latest pop culture fad. Unfortunately, the world's masses suffer from a serious condition known as rectal cranial inversion. And let us also not forget the Deepwater Horizon disaster that occurred in the Gulf of Mexico on April 20th, 2010. Massive amounts of oil leaked into the Gulf and in the subsequent cleanup attempt, the well was capped, which caused a crack in the seabed, causing extreme amounts of oil to pour into the Gulf, killing marine life and destroying the fishing industry in that region. A very highly toxic and controversial dispersant called Corexit was dumped into the sea, and the results have been catastrophic. Fishermen have reported sea creatures being caught in the Gulf that had lesions on their bodies and all sorts of other anomalies, including mutated sea life, eyeless shrimp, and uh, ulcers. What happens when oil and a highly toxic dispersant enters into the Gulf Stream and spreads? What happens when radiation spreads throughout the ocean currents of the Pacific? Roughly 72% of the Earth is made up of water, and if you look at a global map, you could see that all of the world's oceans are connected, so it's essentially one ocean. So what happens when two of the planet's large bodies of water are rendered lifeless? Since roughly 90% of Earth's life is contained in the oceans, and two-thirds of the planet is water, well, what happens when the oceans die? What happens when we can no longer fish the oceans for food? The answer is simple. When the planet's oceans die, all life on Earth will follow. But who cares? You know, there's a game on tonight or some stupid shitcom that insults the intelligence or some other mindless distraction. What level of cognitive dissonance is adhered to that causes people to look away from painful truth? How is it that people can convince themselves that everything is just fine when we are staring our very extinction in the face? How many actually give a shit? Far too few, unfortunately. The fact that the world's top scientists have no idea how to contain the radiation at Fukushima speaks volumes about what happens when a species develops technologically, yet does not operate with wisdom. They destroy themselves. Has humanity made its decision that it will simply bow down and allow the few through psychopathy and corporate greed to drive the planet into its very extinction? Is it game over for life on planet Earth? We're certainly headed in that direction. But I'm just paranoid, so you can disregard all this. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we must face the truth of our situation. Human beings should be in an uproar because our situation is atro atrocious, number one. We have allowed... Yes, we have allowed our world to be taken over by a very few psychopathic ruling so-called elites that are actually driving our world to its very extinction. Now, with the uh, Deepwater Horizon disaster in the Gulf of Mexico and with the Fukushima nuclear disaster leaking massive amounts of waste into the ocean. If this is not a wake-up call for humanity, then I don't know what is. So, while you're being distracted by Miley Cyrus's latest piece-of-shit video, or by, you know, the dentist who wanted to go big game hunting and kill a lion in Africa, or by Bruce Jenner becoming a woman, or by I'm offended by the Confederate flag, or by any number of other really, truly nonsensical things, massive events are occurring in our world that threaten our very our very um, life, you know, 
and I'll, I'll tell you, to, just as an aside here, um, I know I've mentioned this in some other videos, but in 2012, in about February, that was the last time that I had my experience with this shamanic medicine called ayahuasca, which is a very highly visionary plant, and I remember in that session uh, having visions of a future Earth that looked like a dead rock like Mars. And the message I was getting was that the way the energy is now, this is the way that we're heading, but that it wasn't too late. It still wasn't too late to go into another direction, but that, but that it was up to us, that where we go from here is up to us, that we truly have reached the crossroads. And I cannot think of anything more um, crucial to understand than the fact that there is massive amounts of radiation pouring into the Pacific and destroying life. Uh, if this is not a wake-up call for humanity, then I don't know what is. The time for humanity to collectively wake up and come together is here and now. We can't put it off to future generations to mop up the mess because at the rate we're going, the planet will be unable to support life. And like I said, it, I was shown in my visions that it, a dead planet that resembled Mars, just a planet that once teemed with life that has since been destroyed. This is where we stand as a species. Does it sound paranoid? Well, maybe. But that does not negate the fact that it's true. So as we bow our heads in quiet approval, our home is being destroyed and your children's futures are being stolen right from under them. Sleep on, everything's okay, and raise your glass to the extinction of humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached a very, very crucial time in our existence as a species on this planet. And at the rate we're going, I do not personally see much of a future, but I still hold that glimmer of hope that if we came together as one family and understood that we are all each other, that we do have the power to change it. What is it that prevents humanity from doing that? Manufactured divisions, manufactured crises, manufactured chaos, we are divided on so many levels, it's just fucking ridiculous. We allow ourselves to be misled by a ruthless and very few gang of absolute psychically dreamt parasites. Now, I'm going to be looking into this a lot deeper, and if what researchers such as Jim Stone are claiming is true, that this was sabotage, this is the, it's just beyond psychopathic. Maybe it is true that there is a small gang that they are so devoid of any semblance of what it means to be human that they would think nothing of rendering this planet completely dead. Their contempt for humanity knows no bounds. Or maybe, maybe we are dealing with um, an archonic force, as many researchers, researchers have suggested. Maybe we are dealing with um, another species whose, um, who a radioactive planet would be more conducive to an environment that they would thrive in. This again, speculation. But the fact of the matter remains, there is an extinction level event that is occurring off the coast of Japan. It's been occurring since the tsunami, March 11, 2011, and few, relatively speaking, are even remotely aware of it. So, what we'll be coming aware of it really do if we're, you know, these top, you know, decommissioning experts and nuclear experts are saying that technology does not even exist to correct the situation. Well, if you come to the realization that this is occurring and then the planet's top scientists come together to develop the technology that can, you know, stop the leaks, maybe we have a glimmer of hope. I don't know. I tell you, I, tr I try my best to remain positive and optimistic, and sometimes it's just difficult to do that. You have something like this going on. 
it's difficult to see any kind of a future for humanity. Or like I suggested before, maybe it's just that third dimensional experience on this planet for humanity is done. Maybe it's simply, um, I don't know, graduation time. Maybe it's time for us to uh, move on to different experiences. I mean, I don't know. I still though, hold a great concern for humanity and for the planet and for her creatures. And, you know, just to <laughs> When you see the map of where the nuclear reactors are in Japan, it's absolutely insane. Also, um, the reactors that were used at the Fukushima Daiichi facility were known to have flaws. They were GE-built reactors. There were known flaws with these reactors, and they went ahead and used them anyway to construct this uh, nuclear facility. So what we do know is that, according to TEPCO, which is full of shit, as we know, According to them, 400 tons a day of radioactive debris and waste has been leaking into the Pacific. The number is probably far greater. And, you know, that might not seem a lot, but how is that going to accumulate over the years, and especially when there's no way known to stop this? How will that accumulate in the environment? Will the Pacific Ocean be rendered completely lifeless? Now we're seeing reports of 98% dead sea life along the Pacific seafloor. We're having experienced sailors that have sailed the Pacific numerous times saying there is nothing. It's a dead zone. We have massive amounts of marine life washing up along the coast in California and Oregon and Washington. So we're seeing the devastation. We have sea creatures that are caught that are tested for radiation very, very high, far, far exceeding any safe limits. So we actually can measure and can see the devastating results. What is it going to be like a decade from now if the technology is not developed to deal with this catastrophe? What kind of future at all remains for human humanity? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a short segment today. I'm going to be looking into this further. I was very, very interested in the Jim Stone article. Um, I've read some of his other work, particularly... Um, involving antidepressant drugs and I found it very compelling. This is worth reading. He has a lot of images in this article um, and he makes a strong case for sabotage being perpetrated at, uh, at this facility. Regardless of what it was that destroyed this facility, whether it was the tsunami or, you know, sabotage from a computer virus or whatever it was, the fact that the matter remains is that this is a serious, serious situation. And I'm not the type of person that likes to spread fear. I don't, you know, I don't wave placards saying the end is near, the end is near. I truly in my heart do believe that humanity, if we came together as one family, could change this. But, you know, there's more important things, I guess, like uh, dentists shooting lions and uh, Olympian athletes becoming, you know, transgender and having sex change operations and whether or not people are offended by the Confederate flag. These far more important than uh, the entire Pacific Ocean being poisoned with nuclear radiation. But I know that the people, you ladies and gentlemen, that would listen to something like this do understand the extent of this and do understand the severity of the situation. And once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to open your mind and search for the truth. I am grateful to people like you. I'm grateful for all of you who have reached out to me and with your supportive and heartfelt, kind words and your encouragement. And I'm grateful to all of you who have shared this information as far and wide as you could and try to get the word, word out. We have to really work together, I think. Um, to reach as many people as we can. And we're in a unique age now. We have things that we've never had before. We have instant communications. We have the Internet. We have a lot of different tools that we can use to do just that. And I appreciate each and every one of you that take the time to do that, that stand up in the face of ridicule and speak the truth anyway, that um, network together with other like-minded people and try to you know, really share the truth of the situation that we face as human beings. 
I respect it very greatly, and my heart goes out to each and every one of you. And again, thank you so much for taking the time to open your mind to search for the truth and for supporting me in, in this manner. And I wanted to just say this too, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's been a little while since I've done this. I have um, had some health issues and some personal problems that I've had to deal with, but nothing's going to stop me. I'm going to keep doing this, especially now that I see that there is a growing interest, and it's a global interest. That is what encourages me to do this even more, because obviously what I thought was going to be information for a very, very, very select small group of people has reached more people than I, I even believed it would. I, I'm actually overwhelmed by it. Um, another thing, too, I was hit by YouTube with a copyright warning. Um, even though I claim fair use in every one of these videos and I do not monetize so if you watch one of my videos and there's a commercial understand that it's not me that's doing that it's probably someone whose image I used and they wanted to monetize based off that which you're allowed to do with YouTube I always felt that information such as the information that I'm presenting was for everyone and it should be available to anyone that's open-minded enough to actually take a look at it so I do not monetize and I claim fair use I, I do use a bunch of different images just to try to make the slideshows more interesting and um, I was hit with a copyright warning from a group called remove your media LLC so the slideshows might not be as dramatic and interesting as they've been. I have to be very, very cautious. Even though I am claiming fair use and I'm doing this solely for educational purposes, they still nail you. I know that YouTube censors anything, you know, a lot of things that are sensitive information or controversial. I believe there's anomalies with my numbers. They should be far greater. But with others, too, I've noticed this. So keep that in mind, too. Um, and again, thank you, one and all, for taking the time to listen to my channel and to support me. I read all the comments. I don't always get to respond personally to everyone. I have been contacted personally by a number of you and I've met some absolutely amazing people through doing this work and through having you reach out to me and I greatly appreciate it. I really truly do from the bottom of my heart. This is just a small segment today. Um, you can find the article that this is based on, again, at DougMichaelTruth.wordpress.com. I am currently working on a domained website. I um, just finished up a 450-page book, which I'll make available in electronic format, most likely on Smashwords.com, where you can do that for free. Um, I've talked to a number of print-on-demand publishers, and even they won't touch this information because it's very controversial and because I do name names in my work. Um, I do point a lot of fingers, and uh, even POD publishers don't want to touch that. They're afraid of getting sued or whatever it may be. I like to say it's because they have no balls, but whatever. So what I'll do is I'll make this available in um, the electronic format, which, you know, unfortunately is not as in-depth as a printed format could be, but I think my idea is I'm going to make it available very affordable, and then all the profit that's made from selling the electronic format probably will go into self-publishing through a lithograph company and distribution as far as a printed format, which will be much more detailed and in-depth. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for all the support, all the encouragement, all the kind words. It's greatly appreciated, and I will continue to do this. Thanks, for all, everyone, for the concern, too, asking me, hey, is everything okay? How come you're not doing videos anymore? I just took a brief hiatus, again, due to health and uh, personal problems. But... We work through it, and I will continue. I think the next episode will deal with um, transhumanism, which is also becoming very, very in our faces, uh, artificial intelligence, and the development of technology that will be infused with human biology, which to me is a very, very scary prospect, too. But I'm going to get into that, too, and uh, much more coming up in the near future. So thank you once again for your patience, for your kindness, for your support, for your encouragement. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Doug Michael. Until next time, walk in peace.